Yeah, Lawson, aka the Games to Wall Street, here with the Wall Street Jack Boys. Game plan Sunday, another Sunday event. We're here to assess the markets, find out what happened over the you know the past week, make an assessment, a future assessment of you know where the market is going and how we can get in and try to make some money. This is a game plan, just you know, a, a light blueprint, and uh, just checking out what's going on overall in a group setting with everybody from the squad here. If I can get everybody to type in, you know, where you're from so I can get you a shout out. Uh, your name, uh, just type in what state you're from or where, wherever you're located at. You guys know the protocol here. What's up, Marcy? How you doing? So we got Marcy. We got Mia, Mama Mia, Louisiana, of course. What else we got? Let me get you a shout out. We got Rob D in Toronto, Canada. We got Eric in VA, Virginia. You got to watch those Virginia guys, man. They got some singers out there, man. They got too many Trey songs, Chris Brown, and, you know, Teddy. They, you know, guys are smooth, man. <laughs> yeah, Mark, so they get, I get the replay out here. Uh, we got Ron B. Motown, Detroit. Whoa, oh, <laughs> Motown. <laughs> That's what's up, man. All right. So if I missed you, make sure you just type in and we'll catch up on it. Um, you guys, make sure you got whatever you want to take a look at. We'll assess those things here in a few moments. Uh, <clears throat> so basically, um, we had a pretty awesome week last week um, in a newsletter here. Make sure you guys do subscribe to the newsletter, by the way. In a newsletter that we have, uh, just actually released a new article and everybody in this group <laughs> should know who janet yellen is if you don't know who janet yellen is by now then i don't know what to tell you uh, that's a very important person you need to know who she is uh the most powerful woman in the world i would say uh even more powerful than the president uh because she's in control of monetary policy and things like that her job is basically in charge to keep up the u.s economy and also the global economy because a lot of other countries uh you know their policies are based off of ours and if you go down they go down too so it's just the whole world balance type thing here not to make sure that it's you know overly uh great or overly depressed it's just to make sure that the economies have a great balance you don't have to be a rocket scientist or discipline in economics to understand these things because you know, I'm putting the information out there for you guys so that you can take a look at it and understand how to use that at your advantage. And so, Janet Yellen, again, we released a newsletter. It was called Yellen Got the Market Twerking. Let me see if I can pull it up for you guys real quick because I want you to see it because if you're not subscribed, then you definitely need to subscribe so you can get this intel that we give you. So, you guys should be able to see that. All right, so hopefully you guys got that. All right, this one here, this is the article. It's called Yelling Got the, the Money Twerking is what it's called. Yelling Got the Money Twerking. It was a great article, so make sure you subscribe to the newsletter and check that article out so you can know more about who she is. But Yelling had a testimony this week, and based off of her testimony, we seen the market hit new highs, okay? So the Dow Jones hit new highs, the NASDAQ also, um, which we don't need to just uh, pull those up real quick so you can see them, based off of her testimony. Uh, and her testimony, of course, is just a report on the health, uh, the overall health of our uh, economy. Uh, she says inflation, you know, those type of things. Just trying to give you the skinny. Of course, make sure you check out the article so you can understand it more. But when you see uh, the, the stock market do stuff like this, this little white bubble just pop up and it show you a uh, high. It's a new high there. So we're talking about the, the, the markets are going higher and higher. So I just take it back on the weekly here. You can take it all the way. This is three-year chart that I'm looking at. So for the past three years, you can see, you know, from there to here, that's just growth, money being made. And so whenever we hit new all-time highs, Wall Street boys, they 
celebrate and they dropping confetti from the sky. We talked a little bit about that in the last news article. So you got newsletter, you already hit to that. So because of Yellen's speech, that's what happens. And so I talk about it in the newsletter. When Yellen talks, everybody, yeah, everybody's paying attention. All right. Uh, only people who are not paying attention are just the people who just they would, you know, they're not here. You know, and unfortunately, they're focused on the things that keep people distracted, like entertainment. We talk about Black China and things like that. That's where they focus at, but they don't understand that the world is being created right here underneath them. Things happening that will change their lives, but they don't understand because it's high level type stuff. But so we saw that happen with the Dow Jones. And when Yellen talks, basically, it doesn't matter. I mean, if it's good, then the market goes up. If she has a, any hint, uh, hesitation, sound like it could possibly be something negative, then the market is going to sell out. And so if you guys can recall who's in the group, I was telling you guys before the testimony, you might want to just get out of your position, right? Because I've seen time at the time where the markets can push up just so that they can sell off. They try to push the, the profits up as much as possible before yelling talks. And once you start talking, you see so much action in the market. It's freaking bananas. It's, it's really amazing. So if you do have the opportunity to see the stock market live in action, you know, you see the numbers just going berserk. You're like, what in the hell is going on? And if you don't know who Yellen is, you'll never understand, you know, saying, oh, Yellen talking. Like, I should have prepared, you know, for that. You know, I should have closed out of my positions or whatever the case may have been because, you know, for me, I don't want to hold any kind of positions when Yellen talking, to be honest, because that shit can go anyway. You know what I mean? And basically, she just talked about the health of the economy. Uh, what it is is basically the, what you guys see, like we're such a small part of the market itself. We're such a small part of the market. We, we retail, retail traders. Nobody sees us. We're like, you know, ants. Uh, the big boys, you know, the banks, the institutions, they have all the money that's tied up in this. And so anything as far as politics or policy stuff that affects their ability to grow and make money, it affects the stock market. So that's when you see all this crazy movement. And so basically, uh, the feds, which Yellen is the chairman of, uh, they're increasing um, the interest rates. And so when they increase the interest rate, it means that the banks, they can make more money quicker, which they've been losing money in the depressed, you know, interest rate economy uh, environment that we had previously. So now they're starting to boost them up. You know, it could have been a chance that it could have did it in like September again. But like the way that she, whatever she said in her speech, it did not indicate any way that that can happen in september and so but they they're going to raise it again but now it's pushing back for december uh when they're going to actually raise it again and so if you guys can remember from the last game plan sunday i told you guys about the financials we talked about watching the financials and so that was and i did tell you guys that uh city i was watching city you guys remember and i told you that city was going to beat earnings so I was watching it. Um, now, for those that are new, earnings, uh, when companies report, you know, how well they did over the, the quarter, basically just their their overall well-being, uh, are they making money or are they losing money? They had to give account to the SEC, of course, for the post thing called 10K balance and stuff like that. Uh, I'll show you a quick way that you can see this type of information. Uh, you can just go here where it says live news and you think it's one platform. Any time through the day, it doesn't matter. If you want to see what's going on, you just click there and it, it gives you the information right there. So you can just click here and it'll tell you, like, it'll give you some kind of, you know, information that's down here. And so let me see. I told you that City was going to beat earnings and City actually beat earnings. Okay. Uh, that's what I was looking at. Now, the thing is, I was looking for a bullish play, meaning that if they show that they have, uh, if they beat earnings, normally, normally the company, the stock will go up, but that is not always the case, okay? Um, that's why I tell you guys that earnings are crapshoots. And if you're new, you shouldn't play them at all. I'm just telling you now <laughs> because you get your feelings hurt, right? And um, I did actually have a trade on City. It was a gamble because that's what earnings are. They're complete gambles. They're not what we normally do. 
Um, but I knew my risk because, of course, you guys know with the, the trading journal, you know your complete risk, how much you're willing to lose, how much you're willing to make. And so, anyway, you can see down here these little things here that tell you earnings, okay? And so the banks, they did good. Uh, let me see if I can click on it so you can see it. Uh, you just hover over this, it'll tell you. Uh, you can see uh, earnings as estimation was 1.3 million. And actual, let me see, it was 1.28. Okay, well, no, I do know that they, well, let's see, they beat, but it wasn't all the way, it wasn't like anything major, but anyway, it beat, but it went down. And so I ended up taking a small loss on that one, but <laughs> I jumped back in on a revenge trade and I ended up recovering uh most of what i lost i recovered like 90 percent of what i lost so that was pretty good i only was like i only lost like 300 and then i ended up coming back at like two uh i made 286 back all in one day so uh, but again those are those are earnings plays not what we normally do nothing for the newbies only for the experienced traders once you understand risk management you're willing to take your risk levels up higher to try to bring in more money. Now, if it would have hit the way that I wanted to hit, it made a lot of money. So that was that on, on City. But <clears throat> because the, the financial statement, they, they had great earnings. We had JP Morgan. Yeah, JP Morgan the same. Uh, they actually did it, that thing as well. They actually beat their earnings 1.68 and 1.82. But you see the sell off happen as well. <clears throat> Okay, we see the sell offs happen again. All right. And then we have Wells Fargo. And so you can see how the sell offs hit, even though these companies beat their earnings, you know what I'm saying? So, like, overall for the financials, they're doing good, but they, they beat their earnings, but they still have sell off. And it's really just an excuse for people to take profits. The sell offs came from, you know, those guys who want to take profits. And again, earnings. Crap shoots. These are 50 50 toss ups. They can go either way. It doesn't matter what technical or fundamental analysis you got. They can go either way because so they can beat and then they can still sell off. So that is why I tell you guys don't do them, even though we do them, because you got to start to understand risk management before you can get involved in that type of stuff. So nothing for you newbies to do. Okay. Uh, with that being said, uh, anybody got any questions or, or anything to recap on from last week with the financials or Janet Yellen? Because, you know, again, yelling, she caused the markets to go up. But she had those records, but this is just earnings. Which earnings, uh, again, this is on uh, the 14th, so Friday. These are Friday plays, but for the overall week, the market was up. Anybody got any questions on the financials? What happened before we move forward to what we're looking at now? I take that as a no. All right. And so now, uh, basically, uh, going forward with this week, um, you got good economic data. So I do intend for the market to continue in its uh, bullish race to the top. So my overall, you know, idea uh, or oversight of the market is, is bullish. And so, again, I am a natural a bullish trader. That's what I'm looking for, uh, bull plays. All right, and didn't really see much in the markets today, but I saw this uh, in the SPX. We enter into a squeeze, and this is something that I actually I'm looking at to participate in. Then. <clears throat> so you can play this on the SPX, or you can play this on the SPY. They, you know, they mimic each other basically, but the SPY is a little cheaper. So you see the SPX, you see it moves in bigger numbers. But again, we're trading options. So, you know, for those that's new, I don't want you to get confused about that big number because that's not what we're trading. We're trading contracts. And the S again, they just mirror each other. This one here, as you see, instead of thousands, it's smaller, all right? 
So there's different reasons why you'll play these different ones. All right. But the setup that I do see on this one, um, the setup that we see in here is I do see a squeeze forming. We got a squeeze, uh, we, we're in a squeeze actually, so the squeeze is already here. And then we got some upward momentum on top of the squeeze. I did get an entry trigger here, so that would have been the idea to get there. And so because the target's on this one here, the first target is this one here, which is 246. 38 and then the second target is 248 so that would be the second level target i do expect for this to actually go into that direction all right so that's a movement upwards because when it squeeze down here fires long it normally shoots a powerful it normally is a powerful move that's that's why this is a, a major part of what we teach <clears throat> it fires off it's going to be major and so uh spider is good too you can so you can get more premium out the spx though all right you can get some more premium out of the spx let's just take a look here i'm gonna go to trade and i'll show you guys this all right uh, all right and so I know we got who we got in here that was I know is Mike still here? Yeah, we got Mike in here. All right. So this is something I think I'll explain to you a little bit. No, it wasn't you, it was somebody else. No, in the chat. So one of the things about options is that we got mathematics that can be, be on your side. You just gotta understand the mathematics. This thing right here, it says probability out of the money. So the type of strategy that we use. Again, this is in the courses, so make sure you subscribe to the courses if you're already not in there. All right, this stuff right here, it gives you your probabilities of winning. All right. And so we like to do high probable, uh, high probability. And so high probability of winning is 50% or above, right? So if it's 50 50, it's toss up. We want something above 50% because a lot of this stuff is already priced into the market. So it's already uh, an estimation here for us. So looking at these numbers here, for what we're looking at for the strategy that we play that I teach. These numbers tell you your probability of win. As a perfect balance to it, you guys gotta understand there's that's not a perfect balance, but as a balance where you take on more risk, you uh, got bad rewards, right? So lowering your risk increases your rewards. So just understand that. Uh, on this one in particular, um, I would say definitely do anything above the 60 per, uh, 60% because you can grab enough premium on it. And so, I mean, you could take a look at this one here that says 62%. You're doing your spread, that could be your bottom, right? And, you know, again, you're doing them, you could do them five wide. So you can take this one here, that one there, uh, for your spread. I'll show you here what I mean. All right, let me know you guys still with me. And I'm actually just for the demonstration here, I'm going to pull up my other account here. <clears throat> All right. And so we're going to sell a, uh, sell a vertical spread. That's the normal strategy that we use. I'm going to show you what your potential rewards can be here. Uh, five wide, let's see, yeah, let's say 240. Uh, 240, 235. All right, so we get $125 out of this one. Uh, let's see. All right, so that right there is telling us how much money we want to get out of it. To make it plain and simple, you just hit confirm and send, and that's going to tell you your max potential win. So, how much we're, we're willing to risk here? $375. So even if you got a small account and you can participate in a trade like this, because on the Wall Street Jack Boys Trading Journal, you already know if it's five hundred dollars your max risk, then you know that's that's what you see on that line there. The max potential profit is $125 on it. Uh, of course, you gotta understand how to trade your size. So if you want to make more than that, then all you gotta do is just increase the contracts. 
So I'll just increase it from one to two. And now you can make 250, but understand your max loss is now 750. All right. So this stuff here. All right. So you can see that that is a, you know, it's a pretty good trade. Now, the good thing about this vertical put spread is that uh, you still make money if the, if it goes sideways. So let me just pull this down here for you. You still make money if it decides it wants to drift sideways to upwards. OK, so you got two ways that you can make money off of it. Only way you make, don't make money is if it breaks, they go down. But normally it's going to take for it to hit this. This level of resistance, which is the green line here, if it hits that. That's where we can potentially see if it stalls there and it'll go sideways where you still make in money because time is on your side with your strategy to others. Right. And then take your profits. Uh, Take your profits often. That's one of our philosophies, of course. Take profits often. So I got a target of 50%. When you hit 50%, that's what we're looking at taking. All right. Anybody got any questions? I hope I'm not losing anybody. I'm trying to move them as quickly as possible. Makes sense for you guys on this. But I do like that one. What's up, Corey? How you doing, man? All right. So I got that one. What else? Uh, I was working with Mark last week and then we also have another position here on IWM so I do actually like this one here all right so the thing that's important about IWM is that we see our setup and again I don't trade anything without a setup okay so if there's no setup present for me I don't trade it I don't care what the name of it I need to know if there's a setup and so that's what we're doing here I'm just Highlighting setups. If you guys see the charts being posted in the group, that's just me showing you this is a setup. Okay. Look at the setup, define your risk, enter into the trade. All right. So, for one, we're in squeeze. Right. That's good. For two, we got a buy trigger. We have an entry trigger. And it's twice to tell you to get in. Now, I did not get into it because of this golden ratio is here. And I know that that's a key level of support. I mean, a key level of resistance. What we see here in the past, how it just stalls out and then bounces back down. So it's still at this moment, it's still at this level again. Okay. But because it's in a squeeze, because it's in a squeeze, and we do have a, a trigger here, we could uh, expect for the squeeze to fire off. Now, if the squeeze fire off, this is going to be a good move. The squeeze again is down here. That squeeze fire off, fire off means it's turned green. All right. It's gonna push, it's gonna push the joint up, all right, to the target that we have here above us. The first target there, second target here. All right. So that's the setup that I like. Um and then you can get some good premium on this one as well. So if you go to the trade tab, <clears throat> let me see. Yeah, you still get some good premium on the 30 day expirations. <clears throat> so this is good. Uh, what else do we have that we were looking at? I saw another one in S. OK. Uh, this is another setup that I saw here. Let me use the arrows here. Now this big line here, this is a 200 moving average. This is a key level of support or resistance. Our candlesticks are clearly trading above this zone here. So I have every reason to continue my bullish uh, outlook on this one here. But in tandem with that, I have a squeeze. We have a squeeze this here. And the squeeze is one, two, three, four, five, six. It's in six dots in here on the squeeze. Hasn't fired off yet, but we do see a here on the momentum. We did have a trigger here. So, you know, we could have got the edge here. They uh would have got in at this zone. We'll already be cashed out of it right now, probably because it did. It's, it made a big move within the squeeze already. So it's not too late to get into it though. It is above its resistance levels. So I like this one. The fire off. Uh, definitely see it hitting this. And I may have um 
Marcy to post a voodoo, uh, not Marcy, but me to post a voodoo live on this one because I think that this may go past these targets here because the amount of the squeeze that it's in, it may blow past that. So, you know, we'll see. I, I do like this uh, this one here. All right. Now I saw Rob. Rob posted in the chat today. Vive. Vive here. And I want to thank you guys for posting this in the in the chat. Again, you know, when you got squad on deck, you know, it, it just makes it easier for everybody to make money. All right. And so this is the only industry where people don't mind sharing money with other people. You know what I mean? Because it's so much money. <laughs> you don't have the crabs in the barrel thing going on out here. So that's another beautiful thing about what we do. Uh, so Rob did post this. Uh, Rob, I want to thank you for posting this in the group. Okay. Uh, this is a good setup. I do like it, of course. So let me assess it. We got a squeeze that's here. We do got the squeeze that's here. We had an entry trigger way back here, but it's not too late because it's still in this squeeze. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight days in the squeeze. Squeezes uh, normally average uh, about eight to 12 days. So it's at the average point where it needs to fire off. And so uh, definitely expect it to fire off uh, here quickly. And so to get into this one, because again, you guys remember the squeeze training. You got the squeeze training, then we don't have to repeat it. I know we got somebody that's new here to Juana. I'll just show you how the squeeze work. If you go back in time here, these little red dots, that's the squeeze. When it got into this red dots, that was telling us to enter here. That was telling us to get in. And then we caught these triggers here that says buy now. And then we ride the wave all the way up. That's how the squeeze works. Okay. <laughs> uh, oftentimes you see some people, especially people who are not real traders, tell people to buy stocks or Bitcoin or whatever currency they're trying to get people to buy. And they don't trade for real. They're telling you, oh, this, this stock gained X amount. And they tell you to get in right here when it's it hit is high and experienced traders is already in that position by the time you get in they are selling off and so you enter at the point that you're going to lose money so that's just a quick synopsis of what you know you get in the classes that i teach you guys um, but since you actually showed up today i did want to just show you a little bit of what we're doing all right so again on this play here rob uh, we got this 618, which the golden ratio is here. Y'all can see that right there. Uh, this is a major key line of resistance. So you see the stock goes here, it gets pushed back down just because that line is there. Here, it could get pushed back down. But because we have a squeeze that's here, and we can argue the case that this squeeze, higher momentum, it's going to fire off long. And when it fires off, it's going to ha have enough energy because that's what the squeeze is. The squeeze is just pent up energy. Once that energy fires off, boom, we're going to see a big move. Well, we expect to see a big move, okay? So again, you know, we can't predict the future, predict, predict, but we do have uh, a lot of evidence to help us to make these predictions. In order for you to make money in stocks, you have to be able to have the insight to predict the move of it. You can't get in when it's already high because then people are going to sell out. You need to get in or people can't see it and then let it take off. So that's part of the value that I add. And then we have other experienced traders here to help you as well. And that's the wisdom that you can't get from books. Uh, so you need a mentor. That's what I'm here for. Uh, and again, it's just like uh, I had a I had a friend of mine a while back, a long time ago when MySpace was popping. His name was, we call him Pikachu. He, he was, he was uh, from Mexico, but he got deported. And Pikachu, he got he got deported, and I want to say a month or two months later, he came back and he hit me up on my MySpace page, and I was like, "Man, what you doing back here?" He's like, "Man, I had to, you know, come back." I was like, "What? How you get back?" He said, "I had to pay two thousand dollars for a scout." I'm like, "You had to pay somebody two thousand dollars to get back here?" He was like, "Yeah, you got to make it through the desert. You got to go through the desert and stuff." And he was like, "It's like so many people, about a hundred of them. This scout leads them through the desert so they can come across the border." And so all of them got to pay the guy $2,000, which they don't have to, but he's experienced, he knows the terrain. And so your chances of success are greater when you have a scout that can see 
all of this stuff, you know, so everybody don't mind paying the two thousand dollars, whatever they gotta pay to come across here. But at the same time, they all can get caught, which it happens all day, every day. But they still want to come anyway, so you might as well come with a scout instead of trying to figure it out on your own. That's another great value of why I'm here and why this education costs so much money. Because you got to have direction, you got to have somebody that's going to point you in the right direction. And that's basically what we're doing here. Uh, but yeah, uh, Rob, I like this one here, uh, this V. Anybody got else, anything else that they want to take a look at here? Anything that's on your list that you guys are looking at and just need an assessment on it for the week? TTWO. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Looks like, uh, excuse me. All right, so this TTWO, I actually like it. Let me show you what we got here. We got a squeeze that fired off. The green dot means that it fired off. It's just got its first fire signal here. And so normally when the squeeze fires off, it fires off in consecutive sessions. And you see it just rises up, kind of like that did in the past. So it's not too late to get in on it. <clears throat> and the thing is, is that this is the only kicker about this one, though, Rob. The golden ratio is right here, right? That's a key line of resistance. And the squeeze fired its first dot, but it didn't push through that resistance yet. And it is over, is into the overbought territory, okay? It's going into the overbought territory, which when things are in overbought territory, that means it's like you don't want to go in right there. For the most part, it's overall. Uh, but I do see a, a support showing here on my trailing stop here. It's got it here. That's, you see this trailing stop is red squiggly line. It was down here. Those are the, the depressed moments when you see the stocks followed at. And when it goes to this green, that's normally like the floor support. You know, the bottom is, is forming here. And when the bottom forms, if we go back here to this green line and bottom forms, you see the candlesticks go up. Same thing that's here. So because I see that's forming, um, I am poised to still think that that's going to go up. A little bit, but I just don't think it's going to go far. Unless it's got to really, for me, it's got to break through this, though. You know what I mean? I'll be taking a look at that. Let's see on the options chain what we got on it. All right. Um, yeah, open interest is a little skimpy on it. So, of course, you got to watch the slippage. How far are you looking out on this, uh, Rob? How far are you looking out on this TTW? Oh, and the market is, is already pricing in for the next 33 days, $8. So this is 33-day contracts that we're looking at. It's telling us it's going to go $8 plus or $8 minus. That's minus this price, $8 plus that or $8 minus. Made it together because they are digital gaming. Okay, so take two interactive software. Okay. All right, so we got eight dollars moved the price in on it. It's the only thing on it is just that that uh that squeeze fired off. And normally when that squeeze take off, I like to see it push through. I like to see it push through this uh the golden ratio. I don't see it there right now. Just keep that in mind, like. But this is something to keep on. A, let's keep it on the watch list. We'll take a look at see how it reacts on that. See, uh, you know, see if it struggles with this line. Normally, if the squeeze fire off, that normally pushes it through. So we see the day before it was still at that line. The day afterwards, it's still at that line, even though the squeeze fired off. See this? It was in the squeeze, stuck at this line. Squeeze fired off, still stuck at that line. 
Are you looking for a second fire and watching earnings? Okay. How far is earnings out? This is earnings. Let's see. August 2nd. How much time we got for earnings? All right. So we got uh, two, two and a half weeks for earnings to come out. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah, like I like the, the volatility on it. It's definitely, uh, you know, that volatility is high here. Um, let's see. But yeah, so for me, I got to I gotta watch to see how this one is going to behave at this line. If I see it, so this is what I'll be doing, okay? So you see me on Monday when I'm posting, what I'll be looking at, <clears throat> uh, this is on the 30-minute chart, right? I'm going to be watching this here, okay? And you see how it's, it bumps up here, comes down to that floor. This is a floor right here. And then it comes up, it bumps on that, it comes down here. Expecting for it to come back here. But the moment that it breaks that, then... I'll get in there. So that's what I'm that's what I'll be looking for if it does that. If not, then it's gonna bounce down here some more. All right. So you know we're we're gonna keep that on the on the list. All right. What else we got? Uh let me keep that on the list. I'm not looking to get into it. And I know you guys probably watching Jay Z or somebody else and getting some trades from the people, which you know they got a business to run, so they just always post it. So basically, doing shit to be doing shit. <laughs> so, but <laughs> you know they they do work out though. But you got to understand the purpose for why they are trading. You know how their portfolios are set up are different from yours. They beta weight their portfolios. They got a certain amount of risk. Blah blah blah. It's high level type stuff. And just because you see somebody else do it, don't mean you should do it. Keep that in mind. Uh, what else do we have? AEO. Okay, well, let me just take a look at AEO for Eric. All right, Eric. All right, so I mean, you can look at this chart and says, it's a bullish, it's a bearish chart for one. What are you looking at doing into uh, AEO, Eric? Anything that you're looking at doing into this chart in particular? All right. So, are we still in there? Yeah, so just going back on a weekly trend here. I mean, the chart is, is going down. Uh, it looked like it could be established as a floor. And so the only thing I can really see on this chart is for it to continue to go down, which is sideways. All right, that's until it breaks its trend. And that's just on a weekly. Even on a daily, you see how it echoes. All right. Candlesticks are moving that way. You see, they break up, they just stop there, they behave toward the lines. And even though it's going up a little bit here, it's got to be able to break that 49. Right now, I don't see that happening. So that is not the setup that we're looking for. I don't know what your intention is on it, but if you're watching it, if you got my moving average setup, this line here, you see these little lines? This is my 49. And you can see how the candlesticks behave towards them in the past. These candlesticks cannot clear it. They go there, they go sideways, and they get pushed down every time. So you're watching this one, watch it there. All right, you see I got pushed back down again right here. Pushed down. It's coming up again where it's like it's just starting to come up, right? It's telling you to get in, it's coming up. But it's got to clear this line. You see it clear that line, and you can expect for it to go to this line. This will be the next level of resistance. But this will be a counter trend trade. Counter trend trades typically don't work out, so uh, they can. But again, we want to trade with the trend. The trend is your friend until it ends. Just remember that. If I don't see a setup or a trade, I move on to the next. All right. So if you're looking at that, again, you know, if you want to short it, that might be good. What else we got? Uh, yeah, Eric, but see, it's still not, it doesn't still, it still doesn't have enough conviction on it that says that's what it's going to do. You feel me? 
this could potentially be the floor. We don't know. This could potentially be the floor, just like this was the floor, and that was a floor, and that was a floor, and that was a floor, right? So we got like, you know, little floors are showing here. It's, you know, the leverage that's picking up here is still not enough. The thing that's important for you to understand is these moving averages, these are ceilings, or they could be floors. Whenever this 200 is above any other other moving averages, that is all, that's automatic bearish. So just understand that. And yeah, Rob, yeah, and Rob just told you a strategy that you can play on it because more than likely it's going to go sideways. And it's going to go sideways or break. So Iron Condor, that's the sideways strategy. That is the strategy. If you're going to play it, that'll be the one that I will play if that's what you're going to do. That's not my particular strategy, of course, because I'm just bullish because that's the overall market trend, of course. But if you want to just get in that one just because you want to make some money, Iron Condor, like Rob said, it'll be the way to make that money on that one. All right. Who else did I miss? Ron, Ron, let me take care of Ron real quick. Ron says CSIQ. All right. Uh, CSIQ now. Let's see. What are you looking at into doing it to this one here, Ron? This one here is real light on a premium. Uh, so let's just say what the market is saying. The market says the stock is down $16.83. If you're doing 30 days out, they only expect for it to move $2 up or $2 down. Like it's already priced in there. So it's telling you right now $2 up or $2 down. That's where it's normally going to trade at. So we already see that. It's a real light on the premium side here also, Ron. Just because the premium is so light, if you go at the money, well, that's where you normally get the most juice is premium. You're looking at $0.65 cents there, you know what I mean? And so not enough premium here for me to sell spreads on it, uh, point blank period. Uh, you can look into the buying side if you expect it to go up. But again, it's got to move fast. And this stock doesn't move fast enough for that. Uh, because again, if it moves slow, you're still going to lose money, even if it go up because of volatility and uh, time decay. So time decay will eat away your premium if you are a buyer. So for that reason, I would not look at to making a trade on this this particular stock it's real cheap it's so cheap you can actually buy it if you you know if you want to but your edge at buying this one here would have been here you see how we had a squeeze the squeeze is telling you when you want to enter it squeeze told you you're supposed to be buying around this level before it takes off so you could have bought this stock here if you had this information that we got here you could have bought it at 13 dollars. that was the spot you had a trigger to get in there you can roll the wave right there. You'll be exiting out, cashing your money right now. Okay. So you kind of missed the move on this one right now. Right now, buying at that high would not be the smartest move to make. Right there. And we can see right here that it's extended. It's going into an extended mode. And it may go up a little more higher or whatever. But I wouldn't say it's going to go any higher for long. You know, for it to sell off. Uh, what else we got here? Who else said something that I miss? Always, there's an icon now. Uh, media says ATVI and EA. All right, ATVI Activision. All right, now media did mention something about a correlation, and so one of the good things about with what we do with options is that you learn stocks behaviors and one, you know one thing you learn about behaviors is behaviors give you a predictable model it, it allows you to have predictability factors you know more increased because you learn behaviors and some of those behaviors go along with correlations and so you know if you know this these are gaming stocks <clears throat> if she says with atvi ttwo and ea they if they if you, if you take a look at their 
candlesticks, those candlesticks are the patterns. So that's telling us this behavior. If they, if they line up, if they move in the same way, then we can expect the same movement in those. We covered that a, a couple of weeks ago. Well, let me just take a look at this one here. It doesn't have a squeeze present, but that doesn't mean that you can't play it. This chart here is bullish, okay? So even if you go on the weekly here, we can see that trend is bullish because it's going up. So that's the outlook, that's the play that you want to make. Does it go bullish on it? So that means that we expect it to continue to go up. Um, there's no squeeze there, but we do have a trigger. And you got buy a trigger. That was a trigger there, and it's above this key level of resistance that would normally stop it from going up. And so I do like that for this first target, second target. So let's take a look at ATI. Earnings is coming up on this one too. Uh, Mia, <clears throat> let me see. Come on. Anybody got the, oh, here we go, August 3rd, I got it. So August 3rd, okay. All right, so we got earnings coming to August 3rd. <coughs> and so normally these things, when we got earnings up ahead, but they didn't normally run up to get the earnings and then they sell off type deal. And I didn't cover that in our prerequisite, but yeah, it's earnings season is now. So, you know, all the activity we had not too long ago, it's now starting to jump back off now. So it's like every day it's gonna be some companies having earnings, we're going to see a lot of, you know, we should see a little more ups and downs in the market now uh, with earnings back in season. Uh, I like this one to the upside, Mia. Anything else you want to see on that one? It's got some, it's got some good premium and the slippage isn't bad on it. $5 movement built to the price and good. Uh, Eric says, Urban, you are the... And all right, again, uh, Eric, if you noticed that the last one that you posted, and what was the last one you posted? Was it American Eagle? It's like this, uh, those clothing companies, retailers. Now, let me just ask you this, okay? Because you don't have to be a rocket scientist, but if you're in tune with what's going on in the stock market and what's going on with just money flowing, period, you understand that the retailers they're really not doing good right now right uh you know macy's is one of the biggest retailers they sold off all these stores and stuff a lot of these retailers they are finding it harder to compete against amazon like amazon taking everybody out of business right now so to be honest with you and again that's another reason to teach this stuff you know that everybody need to know it even if you are poor you need to understand this stuff you know because this is the future being formed right in front of your eyes and you need to know it so normally you see all the little pretty cute girls that's at the mall, normally they're to greet you, to help you shopping. They're gonna be out of freaking jobs here. But Amazon is just shutting everything down. They're just swallowing everything up. And these companies can't compete because of where technology is at right now. You know what I mean? Everything you can just order online. Amazon just bought into that whole, into that industry where now you can buy as, as many clothes as you want from Amazon. You can order them. And Amazon's gonna send them to your house you get to keep what you want and the stuff that you don't want, you send it back and you don't pay any shipping on that. So it's like no need to even go to the mall. Anyway, this is stuff we're talking about in 2017, but this is the future that is coming, it's on its way. So for that reason, uh, Eric, if you're looking into the retailers, I would advise you to not look at them right now. because This is not real good for them right now. <laughs> if you look at any of those charts, you can see, uh, you know this 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 big blue line right here that is a major line if the candlesticks are trading under this blue line then it is bearish all right so if you're going to do something on that i'll be looking for it to go down buddy so i don't want to spend too much time on it just because you can clearly see that it's going down yeah but again with your options okay so just like rob said you can play you can make money off of it all you got to do is short Right, uh, we're well not short it, but just buy put, right? So when we go over those strategies there, you got two ways. You can sell a credit card, a call credit spread, or you could just buy put, right? And so if you're gonna short it, right? Uh, let me see. And again, I don't even play these, I don't even waste my time 
on it if it's not fitting pop out it. I'm looking through options because there's so many ways to make me on this. Let me just pull this one up for you guys. And you can see, just look where all the action is on this, right? Open interest. This is where everybody got their money at. Where y'all see the money at? Look at the 15 strike price. It's 14,000 orders on that. So that means that they are betting for this $18 to go down to $15. <laughs> all right. I mean, there's this, I mean, even on the bright side, it's only 1,300 people versus 14,000. And so when they put their orders in, when they're buying the stocks or selling the stocks, that's what make this move. That's what make these numbers move. So, you know, just understand that, you know, all you got to do, you know, you can just go in and buy 20 cents a put. You see your potential risk, not a bad move. You're only risking $20 to make $1,400. Well, twenty dollars. If you want to take, you know, what I'm saying, you want to make a bet on it. You, you know, you understand your risk profile. Use your Wall Street Jack Boys Trading Journal because you put in the numbers. It's going to tell you that you, you know, you're not at risk of blowing your account up and crazy. But twenty dollars is not enough to blow your account in the first place. It doesn't matter the stock market crash. The max you can lose is twenty dollars. All right. On the bright side, you take a twenty dollars to make fourteen hundred dollars. That's not a bad play, man. <laughs> So, uh, you know, stuff like that, man. That's where you want to see stuff like that. But yeah, you can, but just understand my general, what I'm generally looking at in the market is for bullish plays. You know what I'm saying? That's what I like to typically look at. There's no premium over here for you to sell a call credit spread on this one. Uh, not really. Let me see. You go to sell, get vertical, 19. Let's try to make it. There's no premium down here. Those don't have any kind of value. So $19.21. And so, you know, again, you see, you know, you can make $50 off of that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you're risking $146 to make $54. Now, if, uh, you know, again, these here produce the same kind of output. So being a smart investor, would you want to risk <clears throat> $146, or you could just buy a call, and you're risking $20 max. And you're risking that $146 to make that $54, or you can take that $20 to try to make that $1,400, uh, was it $14,000 or whatever it was? Real big number. But yeah, so that's what you want to look at on that if you're going to do any kind of play like that. All right. So I want to discourage you from trading it to trade it with the trend. Okay. Look at that as in short, it's gonna go down <laughs> nine times out of ten. It's gonna go down. That's where everybody else is uh, betting for it to go 15 strike. So, all right, uh, what else we got? Anybody got anything else we want to take a look at before we bring it to a closing? I got like uh, let's do like five moments and then we'll just wrap it up here. All right. And let me ask you, what well, you guys, you know, got anything that's there? Oh, Amazon. Oh, so Corey wanted to see Amazon and Google, which we did get off on Amazon this week. Definitely made some money off of Amazon. So I'm already out of Amazon. Got in there, cashed out on it. Uh, had crazy uh, return on that one. I think it's like 200, about 300 percent burn on that one. And it was a trade held for like four days. Got in on the squeeze. Because we had a squeeze here. We had triggers that was there. We had the whole setup. You know, I already charted this one. We went, uh, you know, before Yellow spoke, it was just like, boom. It was like, you know, crazy. Just, you know. And then, you know, it's crazy because I had got out early, but then the joint kept going up. I could have made even more money. But, you know, you don't want to be. Big four tick. You want to get big four tick and lose all your money because it'll go down on you. You gotta get it while you can. Uh looking for it to hit 1020 by Friday. Yeah, why are you looking for it to hit 1020? Is there anything in particular that's <clears throat> that is uh telling you that you think you know that's gonna hit the 1020? I just want to know 
why you feel like it's going to hit that number in particular. And so this is 1020. All right. Okay, so earn is in a Nike bid. Man, I'm gonna tell you like this. Uh, Amazon is a beast mode, all right? There's no reason for it to even be going down. But Amazon is shaking up the regulators, all right? <laughs> because it's not a government is looking at them, not a, trying to be a conspiracy theorist, anything like that, but this is just really, really what's happening. Um, you know, Amazon just shut a whole, closed a whole lot of deals, like the whole food deal, like you said, the Nike deal, all that stuff. When you hit that stuff, you've seen that stuff happen. All right. Uh, and we, I wrote about this in the newsletter. I hope you guys are subscribing to the newsletter because I'm dropping the jewels in there. But if you subscribe, you can go back into the archives and pick these, you know, go back and read them when we talked about that. Uh, it's called Run Up a Check. We talked about how we ran up a check on Amazon. Boom. And they crazy block. And then when it did that, Everybody got quiet because they was like, yo, what happened? <laughs> so anyway, the thing about it is, yeah, they got earnings coming up. I'm sure they're going to be earnings. We thought the financials would be earnings too, and they still sold off. So I'm still a little skeptic about it. For one, we're entering into this overbought territory again. All right. So that means that it's extended, meaning it's overpriced. So again, are investors willing to buy Amazon up here at the highs? You know what I'm saying? Right. So a lot of them, they, you know, again, because they're the ones who really make the market move and they sell off on it. They want to buy Amazon back here. And you see, the, you know, like a little flash crash here at 926. The guys who bought it back in there, man, they already gone. Boom. And they back in here. Boom. Now you see it. We're still back here at that top. I'm not saying that it's going to go down, but just. Play it careful. Corey, I know you know how to navigate through Amazon and Tesla, so I'm sure you're good. Just understand, make sure you have a defined risk. I think you got the Wall Street Jack Boys Trading Journal, so just make sure you plug in your numbers in there. Because when Amazon moves, they don't move like them other uh, stocks. And you know, that that should be like, boom, you know, fucking wipe you out. You know what I mean? So <laughs> we had some, one of those students, uh, he's not here tonight. He came from uh, uh, JV courses. And he wiped his whole freaking account out. You know, he made ten thousand dollars and lost it all uh, when that happened. You know what I mean? So when that crash happened, you know. So just make sure you're watching it. You know what I mean? Uh, you can say uh, ten eleven. Now ten eleven is definitely something that. Okay, so Mika, um, excuse me. I'm gonna have you um, post a voodoo on Amazon in the group. Because again, the voodoo C lines are support and resistance that the Fibonacci don't pick off. And the, the voodoo lines is basically a Fibonacci grid. <clears throat> uh, 1011, that may be good. I'm going to get you to post it in the group so we can take a look at it. Just understand your risk is over, you know, it's in the overbought territory. Okay, let's keep that in mind. But I wouldn't be surprised if I see it go sideways, bounce between the 7 and 8, 6, just a little more. And before it take off, yeah, it may take off again, but I mean, it should take off. But again, it's so overpriced. I don't know if the investors are really going for it. And they're not liking the fact that Amazon is becoming a monopoly. And so now the government's taking a look at them. They're trying to do everything they can to stop it. But, you know, it's just, I'm sorry. Every new business is being created right now has to go through, you know, Microsoft or Amazon for cloud. So we're in the cloud technology area. Microsoft, uh, Amazon, whether they buy something, they just take over the whole thing, man. So they're just a monopoly and regulators, they're not happy with it. So that's why I'm not awfully bullish about Amazon right now. It's definitely a bullish chart. I got to play it only when I see a setup. And we already took our profits back here. You know what I mean? Because the squeeze is gone. Just keep that in mind. All right. Anything else? Anybody else want to look at? Well, I got two minutes, so we don't have anything else to look at right now. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you guys for coming up, uh, you know, coming up on this. Uh, you said, why the big fire? Why, why? 18 day squeeze. Okay, now that one showed up in the Wall Street, that boys. Um, uh, watch this. Uh, let me just show you the watch this. I share this with you guys. If you don't have it, make sure you get it from me. So a lot of those stocks show up on this watch list here. All right, so if you're looking for trade to trade, 
this is a real good watch list. The YY trader you're talking about. And I see these through the day, just, you know, whether I play them or not. It's YY right here. All right. So let's see what YY got. Real quick. All right. Okay, now YY, <laughs> you see how it tested that, uh, it tested the uh, Fibonacci there. And to that line, it's got one squeeze fired. All right. Squeeze there, squeeze fired off. When the squeeze fired off, this is what it looks like when squeeze fired off. That joint boosts like that and makes big moves like that. So that's why we like this squeeze play. You know, we had a squeeze, we had a trigger for it. Uh, you know, but we really missed this the, the move that we wanted to make, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, we wanted to get here when we saw the setup. And so it is actually a little late here. Right? Just to see how it's going to open up on Monday. You know, if you see it fall back down to the um, the 618 here, that'll be a line of uh, support of the floor. That'll be a good uh, position to pick it up and scoop it in. Scoop it up right there, because I do think that it's got more potential to fire long. It's just got its first fire off of it. It definitely should be hitting that 66. So some more upside potential on it. But we missed the edge on it. Again, we missed the edge back here when we got the triggers. We missed the edge. But it don't mean you can't make money. But I still think it's going to go up more to the second target now. And that was just a test to the first target. Again, this is not the full move. That whole body of the candlestick has got to be touching that line. And so this little wick, the candle wick, when it, it touched those lines, we call that test. That's just a test of the line. We still. I still see that the candlesticks, the next ones that's forming, should do, you know, go up like that, the whole body. That's what we're seeing on that. I do like that one. So make sure y'all put that, those in your watch list. Uh, the YY, again, that's already in your Wall Street Jack Boys watch list. It's like number one if you put them in order so you can see those. <clears throat> All right. Well, we're going to conclude the session here, man. Uh, you know, make sure you guys stay uh, tuned, um, bringing out the newsletters every week, give you guys something entertaining and so, some jewels to drop on those things for you guys to subscribe. And I want your feedback. You guys let me know how you feel about the newsletters. It's something that we should keep up on. You know what I mean? Find the jewels on that and any other things that we can uh, do to improve uh, our community, our courses, and, and just helping, you know, people to, to take advantage of this. You know what I mean? Y'all know what time it is. But I appreciate y'all, man. Peace and love. We catch it. Catch you guys on Facebook. Go to the website, wallstreetjackboys.com. If you already haven't subscribed to the courses, make sure you get your classes there. Peace.